My name is Alicia. While my condition might confine me, it doesn't define me. So I'd like to welcome you as our third guest on our special Bring Your Own Chair series. Mm -hmm. We here at For the Haters have a special place for the wheelchair community. And although that you aren't paralyzed, um, you are bound to a wheelchair mm -hmm. due to your condition. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit more about muscular dystrophy for those that don't know. So basically muscular dystrophy is um, a degenerative genetic disorder that affects um, the strength of muscles or lack of, um, muscle, more specifically muscle tone. So um, people with muscular dystrophy have low muscle tone and um, it stops them from fully using their muscles. Um, a lot of the time, people mistake muscular dystrophy for MS, which is mul multiple sclerosis, um, and that's it's totally different from that. Um, and, but they are alike in the sense of it weakens muscles. What is the biggest difference between the two? I would say, from my understanding, with multiple sclerosis, um, the person is able to walk in ambulatory. However, with muscular dystrophy, eventually it always ends up that most times they're not able to walk at all. So the, the um, disease, you know, causes them to have weaker muscles over time. So let's start from the beginning. Take us back to when you were a child. When did you start noticing the difference, you know, that you were different than everyone else? And when you were really needed of assistance of getting around? So... When I first noticed that I was different, um, I would say about three years old. And the reason for that, that's when I got my first wheelchair. So when I got it, I was um, noticing that I was the only one in my classes and things like that in a wheelchair. Um, prior to that, I was carried around in like a stroller or carried around just regularly and I didn't think anything of it. But when I started to attend school, I would say um, that's when I noticed I was different. You know, so what was it like sitting, you know, while you were in a chair at the playground in your mm -hmm. youth years? You talk so highly about positivity and how, ha how much happiness your life has brought you. You know, was it always like that or did you have to really reach and find that? So in terms of what it was like, it wasn't um, something that I really <clears throat> was able to take in as a negative thing. Um, I always adapted to my environment um, and you know my younger years I always used my wheelchair sort of like a toy like my younger brother I would drive him on the back of my wheelchair or you know just adapt new ways of playing um, and so I would say I was always you know very confident um, it has a lot to do with my upbringing I was always confident in the way that I carried myself as a disabled person um, so I give you know, credit to my parents for that, and it's carried me through adulthood. So we fast forward a couple years, mm -hmm. you know, it's time for college mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You go to college, you double, double major, mm -hmm. which is already impressive in itself. Um, but not only do you go to college, you actually fully engage in the full college experience by mm -hmm. living there independently full time. Mm -hmm. um, if you could kind of just talk to that experience, was everything easy for you? Was there ever a time that you felt like you shouldn't have been there or you know you didn't belong maybe you shouldn't have stayed there mm -hmm. so while well, the main reason for going to college is to get a education uh, my biggest reason or something that I really looked forward to was living on campus so that was really important to me um, it shaped my independence level and it forced me to just focus on myself and depend on others. Um, since I was not, 
outside of home um, ever prior to this. So, it, you know, going to college, it really helped me a lot to be more independent and it just, it came natural, I would say. Did you ever have any type of moments of weakness where, you know, you were overwhelmed with being there your first time alone and, you know, independent? Not really, just because I, from the start of moving in to co my college dorm, I sort of embraced the whole experience as a whole. Um, the times that I would get homesick, I just went home for a weekend and, you know, like any other college student, yeah. I'm sure Reduced that, your battery. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then sometimes my family would come visit me, like bring a meal or two um, snacks to fill my dorm room. Um, so that was comforting. How do you think that your mom handled, you know, you being away for the first time? She was scared. Yeah. Um, so unlike other college students, she stayed with me for a week um, when I initially <laughs> moved in. So that was a little embarrassing. But I mean, I get her reason mm -hmm. for, wanting, for wanting to leave me feeling confident that I had all the tools needed to be successful. Um, you know, living on campus academically as well as physically. Um, so that was pretty fun. We sort of navigated the campus together. She didn't attend my classes with me, but mm -hmm. um, it was sort of fun. Um, so, you know, after your mom leaves and she's not there to help and guide you, you know, how do you get to class? How do you carry your books? How do you, you know, do everything yourself now? Mm -hmm. So in terms of getting to class, um, I you know, conveniently had wheels, so I used my wheelchair <laughs> to get to classes, but um, that that was pretty much easy for me. Um, my school, it was a small school, so every everything was relatively close to one another. Um, in terms of my books, that was a situation where I was forced to ask for help when needed. So I kept <clears throat> my book bag on the back of my chair, and when I would arrive to class, um, I arrived like 10 minutes early or so. Um, and I would ask, you know, peers who eventually became friends, you know, in each class to help me and assist me and take my books out. Um, luckily for me, like, that's all I needed help with. I can write, um, type, everything normally. I just needed help getting those things out um, for me to be able to use um, in class. Did you ever find any instances where the campus wasn't accessible? Not so much not accessible, but during inclement weather, that was sort of difficult to sort of navigate. Like if it rained or snowed, of course, class would still be going mm -hmm. or going. So in those instances, um, I utilized um, what's called campus safety, and the shuttle would you know, take me to class um, because my wheelchair couldn't get wet. You know, during college, we meet and make all these relationships with mm -hmm. people. And for you, you know, you met your husband there. Mm -hmm. He was your tutor. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to kind of just talk a little bit about him. Yeah, so um, more specifically, the class that I was tutored in was st statistics. And we didn't date at all, like while he was my tutor. Um, and he wanted to like keep contact um, after, just in case I needed help, any further help. So funny story, um, he actually asked me three times before I said yes to agreeing to be his girlfriend. <laughs> um, and that was just because I just was not, you know, interested. But he was very persistent. I mean, we remained friends after. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that's all I wanted to keep it at. <laughs> and his persistence, you know. So now you have your wedding, you know, this dream that most females have. What was it like for, you know, that to come true? It was amazing, uh, it meant even more to me that I was able to basically um, just continue to lead a normal life. Ever since I was born, my mom made sure I let, led a normal life. So this was no different in my eyes. And it just made me more um, happy 
that I was able to do what anyone else would do. So now you're 27, happily married. You have three kids, a set of twins, two-year-old twins, and an eight-month-old. You know, tell us what it's like being a mother and raising children from a chair. So, um, yeah, motherhood for me is pretty much the same, yet different in some ways. Um, it's definitely, it poses challenges that an ambulatory mother wouldn't face. Uh, for instance, with my muscle, um, you know, capacity being so low, I can only, I was only able to carry my um, kids, you know, to a certain point. Like right now, my eight month old is getting a little too heavy for me to lift. Mm -hmm. So I sort of have to sit them on my lap and I sort of adapt ways to, you know, make it work for me and them. Um, and in terms of how I care for them, um, I can't really be left alone with them just because I require so much help while they're young. And what gets me through with that is knowing that, you know, this stage for them is temporary. So I still embrace it like any other mother would. Mm -hmm. um, I just need help. But that's basically how my life is. You know, I require help. So I'm very grateful to have the support system that I do. You said earlier that you have this condition, you know, that confines you but doesn't define you. Mm -hmm. um, and you've taken that and run with it and started your own vlog channel. You know, do you feel like that you went down this path so that you could show people more sides to you as a person opposed to what people see, you know, right off the bat? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Rolling Through Life with Talisha. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about me. So I. Yes, um, absolutely. I would say that my main reason for starting this channel has to do with the fact that. Um, I, you know, live a normal life. Um, uh, everything that I've done, go to college, get married, and have children, become a mother, um, those are things that people consider extraordinary. And while that's great and all, I consider them ordinary because, you know, I feel like people that are not in a wheelchair don't get the amount of credit um, as I do for what I've accomplished and I, I'm, I don't want to downplay myself in any way my accomplishments but I just see it as living my normal life so I wanted people to have an insight on the fact that I definitely live a normal life um, but I just don't see it as anything you know out of the norm and it has a lot to do with how how I was raised. You know we like to end our segments with our guests giving a little bit of word of advice in your case, it could be someone that is suffering with muscular dystrophy. It could be a partner of someone of muscular dystrophy, or it could be someone that, you know, doesn't quite understand and might be bullying someone in the situation. Um, you know, what would you say to those that are listening? I would say that despite the fact that they have limitations placed upon them physically, in terms of what they're able to achieve, don't place limits on them at all because the reality is that anything is possible and I feel like I am a living um, testimony of that, you know. Right now my biggest accomplishment is uh, motherhood and that's something that a lot of people in the medical world um, discouraged and didn't, you know, really encourage me to pursue uh, pregnancy and motherhood. So. Anything is possible, and I'm, you know, proud of the life that I live. And to anyone else out there that has experienced muscular dystrophy in any way, whether it be you have it or know someone with it, um, just stay encouraged and know that you can do anything in the world. Awesome. Well, on um, behalf of the team, we thank you so much for coming out here. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, and I'm looking forward to speaking to you more in our podcast. Absolutely. For the haters, for the haters, come on to it now or later. Whoa, uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah.
It don't matter what your name is, share your story, we'll be waiting, come on.